Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. Today we are going to make some chemistry. To be precise, we are going to make our own flux. What is flux, you may ask? Well, flux is basically, if you take a look at your standard, usual soldering wire, um, it is filled with some material, which is the flux. And what does the flux do? It helps to eliminate any kind of dirt and uh, corrosion on the wires you have, uh, on the parts you are soldering. And it also helps the, the lead and the tin to flow where it is supposed to be. In a nutshell, flux is really essential for any high quality solder work, so you can't get around it. Most of the time the flux which is already encapsulated inside of your solder wire is pretty much enough. But as soon as you are going to solder on older devices or using older components which have some corrosion on the legs, you are pretty much forced to use some kind of additional flux. You could go to any local hardware store and buy some flux, but where you are not supposed to buy flux which is used for soldering uh, the rain pipes which go along your house or anything which is supposed to be used on copper pipes because that stuff is really acidic and will eat your PCB away in no time. So a good quality resin based flux is what we are going to need. And actually it is really easy to make some of that stuff yourself. So let's get started. What you're going to need is basically everything that is placed on my table right now. You're going to need some isopropanol alcohol. You're going to need some really clean 99.9% .9 alcohol like isopropyl alcohol or 2-propanol, whatever it is called in your country. You can get it at any what is it called? Where you get your medicine? The stores where, which are really expensive usually. You can get it there or you can buy it over eBay for really not that much money. Actually I just bought uh, a big container of alcohol for around, I guess it was $10 shipped. Not that, that expensive. Um, also you're going to need a little bottle where you're going to fill your uh, flux into. You are going to need some rosin, which you will get, for example, at a local music store. Um, not that kind of store where you can buy uh, music CDs, but, uh, but a store where you can buy your instruments. And this is basically used, for example, for violins uh, to do stuff with it. I have no idea, I'm not a musician. But uh, they use it for something at their violins, whatever. Um, we use it to get nice solder work. Also, if you are trying to make uh, rosin activated flux, which is way more aggressive than the normal flux we are uh, doing in the first place, you are also need some kind of acid. I prefer citric acid because it is really cheap and I'm not quite sure. I have the feeling it works better than what some people do, um, like using aspirin or acetyl salicyl acid. Don't ask me what it's in English. Aspirin, ACC, you know it. Um, I prefer that because it's clean and it works better for me. Clean meaning uh, you don't have all these filler materials which are encapsulated in the tablets which are pulverized using aspirin or whatever. However, I already have a whole bottle of uh, activated flux, so I'm not using the citric acid today. So we are just using, stay here please, isopropanol alcohol, the rosin and an empty bottle. Also quite useful is a little syringe where you can put your flux into which is really helpful by applying it to your solder joint. So let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is taking our rosin and fill it into the bottle as much as we can. Um, 
you can actually fill the whole bottle with it. It will just be more concentrated. Um, some people say you should use 50% of rosin and fill uh, the bottle up with alcohol, but I have used my method with filling the whole bottle with the uh, rosin and it works pretty nice. As you can see, the consistency is also quite liquidy and I prefer it more rigid. So the more rosin you put into your bottle, um, it, it will get way thicker, but uh, I actually prefer it so you can place it where you want and it doesn't run away instantly. By the way, you should get a bottle who, uh, which is really sealed. Um, for example, this one I used has a little rubber gasket around the top, which presses against this bottle cap. Um, this one doesn't have it, so I'm a bit fuzzed about it. So maybe this uh, the alcohol in it will evaporate and I'm left with a big block of rosin in the future. We will see. On the other hand, this stuff gets really, really sticky, so it should seal itself pretty good. So now, fill some of those into there. By the way, you shouldn't have any moisture on your hands because that stuff sticks as hell. It will take you quite some effort to get it off again, if it is once on your hand. Oh, and don't wash your hands with warm water. It will melt the stuff and it gets even more sticky. Yes, it is some tedious work, but you will get rewarded. At, the, at least if you compare the price you pay for this stuff and the price you pay for commercial flux you can buy at your local store. Which can be sometimes really expensive, considering what the main ingredients are. So I guess that should do it. So, now that is done. Next thing you should do is, before applying the alcohol, you should clean your table up. Because if you don't clean your table right now, you will definitely spill some alcohol, that stuff will dissolve and your whole table will be a sticky mess for the rest of your life. So better clean up now. And also clean up remaining resin dust from the bottle. Get that back in here. Oh, and by the way, two of those, uh, those bags did cost me, if I remember correctly, 10 euros. So And this will last forever. So the next thing is to fill this bottle up with this alcohol. Um, and at least try to not spill everything. You will instantaneously see that it is starting to dissolve. So that is full. And as, this, as you see, it's not really anything at all as most of the uh, space is already taken by the rosin. So, next thing is to wipe any excess off the desk. Any excess alcohol you don't want to have on your desk should be removed.
next cl uh, close this and give it a good shake so now that we have made this we can every now and then sh give it a good shake or place it at a warm place for example I uh, place it on my radiation heater um, don't overheat it you don't want to uh, evaporate the alcohol again um, but heat really helps in dissolving the crystals so the rosin is it a crystal I'm not sure the rosin crystal maybe it helps dissolving it whatever um, so as I said give it a good shake heat it a bit up and just let it sit for around a week or two weeks until it is completely dissolved and if the alcohol uh, drops in in volume just refill it with alcohol so when that is done it should look something like this and you can place it fill it in a syringe like this and use it on your projects and it will really help you if you are using older components with oxidized legs or using an old not cleaned or not protected uh, PCB with oxidized copper traces so this is really helping very much. I hope you found today's visit at Tinkertube's lab interesting. If you did please consider subscribing to my channel, giving me a big thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. I hope to see you the next time back here at Tinkertube's lab. Until then, goodbye.